So this other game we played, Volfosten. Vol, I don't, yeah, sorry about the German pronunciation. It's Vol, V-O-L-L-P-F-O-S-T-E-N. It's all one word. What does it mean in German? It means... Uh, idiot poll, someone said. Some, someone said it means idiot poll. They tweeted at us. Anyway, so... Uh, I saw them playing this at PAX. They have these turn in tabletop. They have these tournaments at night, usually like uh, like Saturday night showdown stuff like that, where you sign up for this tournament and you show up not knowing what games are about to be played, and you just sometimes you're even playing different games than other people in the same round of the tournament, and you know you play and you play and you you try to just it's just who's good at games, who knows what these games are going to be. Only the people who run tabletop know what those games are going to yeah. be. It's uh, a good time. And I saw in a later, a very late round, possibly a final round of one of these tournaments, people were playing this game, and I remember what the box looked like, <laughs> so I went and got it from the library, and this game is Volfosten, idiot pole or something, whatever, I don't it's know. It's basically advanced jungle speed. It's advanced, it's sort of advanced, sort of not advanced jungle yeah. speed. So the way it works is there are five poles or six poles? Three, four, five, six. There are six sticks, and each stick has a lot of different factors. They each contain, on the top of the stick, they're square, rectangular, yep. like, tall sticks, like, I don't, you know, whatever. Um, a die face from right, 1 and 6. It's a die face from 1 to 6. Then, on the side, there is a picture of an animal, a letter of the alphabet. A, a number of sticks? A number of just sticks, like like hash marks, like someone was scratching out the date because they were in prison. Yep. Uh, a shape. And a polygon. Right, a, a polygon of some kind. And then you get a whole bunch of dice, and you choose which dice you're going to use when you play the game, right? So we chose, we decided to use the simple dice because of just the situation we were in. And you ro we roll the dice, and the dice tell you which totem to grab, what to do, depending on which dice you use, right? Yep. Some dice tell you which totem to grab, the white one, I think. Yep. Some, some tell dice, you how to grab it. How to grab the totem, and some tell you what to do before you grab the totem, right? Yep. Uh, so you could end up in a situation where it's like, okay, you got to clap, then you got to grab a totem, you got to grab it in between like your index and your ring, your like your two hand, the backs of your two hands. Oh, that's the worst one. And then... You win if you get the totem with like the 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 what the biggest animal on it or something. So it so it depends. Oh, the on, animal with the most legs. Yeah. The, so the factors are like you're shooting for the highest number of one of the attributes, which might be either the die or face, lowest. It number could be of sticks. Sometimes well, the ranking well, well. gets reversed. You might be going for animal with the least legs. So one die says the factor. So like you're looking for your by default. The factor is the die face. You're looking for the highest die face. Mm -hmm. The factor is the polygon. You're looking for the polygon with the most sides. Yep. If the factor is the animal, you're looking for the animal with the most legs. Mm -hmm. But the orange die might modify that and say, no, you're looking for the opposite of that. Yep. Now I need the animal with the least legs, the, the snake. snake. The snake has one leg, right? Yep. So obviously all the all the sticks are mixed up, well, right? Zero so like, legs. Right. So like the stick with the letter A on it, which would be the, the best stick if you had alphabet ranking reversed right, has the number two on top of it. So if you were, right, so when you're- And the octopus with the, the second most legs. Yep. So And the hexagon. <laughs> yep. So it's like every, there are situations based on the dice that come up where every stick basically has an equal chance of being the best stick for any given die roll. So you don't know until seeing the die which stick you want to grab. Not only that, but- you know, you might be too slow. You might not have grabbed the best stick because you were a little slower than the person who did grab the best stick. And in that case, the second best stick is now the best stick. There's actually ranking involved. It's yeah. not just like so, whoever grabs it wins and everyone else loses. It's so like, everybody grabs, and then you evaluate, did you grab it the right way? Anyone who grabbed it the wrong way, they're just eliminated. Right, they just so sit there down. are actually a lot of cases where it's like, okay, maybe it was, you know, clap and grab it with your wrong hand and... You grab the worst possible stick, but everyone else either forgot to clap or grabbed it with their normal hand. Yep. And you're sitting there with the shittiest stick, but in your you did everything else right. You win. You get the most points. Yeah. So and you get first place, second place, third place. Right. So the the scorekeeping is actually pretty clever. Basically, if you win a round, you get three points. If you come in second, you get two points. If you come in last, you get one point. But the rules. But are you can only score points. If you actually successfully grab something, right? So there could be situations where now, someone gets out, three and everyone else gets zero. The way the scoring works is you get a long stick, a medium stick, or a short stick. Right. At the end of the game, you make your idiot poll from all the sticks, whoever is the it's longest It's really just wins. a really clever score sheet to have these little wooden sticks that are 
length, one, two, and three. Except the gray sticks are about a millimeter Rim short. Rim is complaining about the manufacturing precision of the sticks no, but in they a were, board game. They were consistently so, and if I was losing by a millimeter, mm. I would say that I had lost. They're one, two, and three. Stop being pedantic. The rules say you follow the length. Stop being that guy. The stop p- making up your own rules for games. Stop being that guy complaining about the manufacturing precision not, of a I board who, game. Who says I complained? I said that that is part of the design. That is, no, it is not. Three clearly second places. one, two, and three. To a second, it is obvious. A second place and a third place is not as long as a first place. I would say the first place breaks that tie. No, it doesn't. By anyway, the <laughs> written rules of this game. The point is, it's, you co- are it's wrong. cool. So you save a lot of time adding up your score with apps or calculators or anything like that because you can just lay out all your score sticks in a big long line, and whoever's st- score stick, total score stick is the longest, is the winner. It's a really cl- fun and clever scoring mechanism, uh, mechanically speaking, that doesn't involve math. Uh, and matches the theme of the game of idiot poll because you're grabbing polls and also using an idiot poll to keep score, uh, and that's really clever and fun. The game is actually very difficult. Yes, it is way hard. We're like, oh, yeah, we're advanced. Let's use some advanced dice. So If you some, think you're good at jungle speed and you'll be good at this, no. nah. So some of them involve like standing up, turning around. and sit- So if your environment isn't good... It's not really great for this game. You want to be in a situation where you're at a table where everyone can reach the whole table without getting up. Yep. Right, with their arms. You need a small circular table, relatively speaking. Maybe like a cocktail situation. But you want it low so everyone can sit in chairs. And plus, you need room because people have to get up and run around the chairs. Depending on which dice you use. You can always use the simpler dice and avoid those scenarios if your table is suboptimal, which is what we did. Yep. But I think if you really want to get the most out of this game, you need that perfect perfect environment where everyone's sitting around equidistant you can all grab the the sticks because you can't arrange the sticks all right in the middle of the table they need some space between them yep. so naturally speaking some sticks are going to be closer to some players at some times and sometimes not but if your table's small enough and everyone's sitting close enough that won't really matter because all the other stuff is really what's going to determine the winning and the losing. Yep. And unlike Jungle Speed, where very, like, very often two people grab the totem at the same time, and you needed to come up with a like specific way to resolve that situation that isn't just violence. Mm-hmm. This game has the same problem, but it happens less often because most of the time someone does just figure out what to grab. Yeah, faster. jungle speed has the problem so often, so it puts in a bunch of rules for like, okay, whoever's lower on the totem, whoever's got more fingers on the totem, whoever, right? All whoever this stu- has the totem, <laughs> right? By any means necessary, right? In this one, they cut out a lot of those rules because it happens so rarely. You don't really need those rules yeah. if you're it a mature, if you're a mature adult. It won't happen, but you're better off grabbing a different. Right? If you're gonna, you would better off not fighting with the person for the top stick and just grabbing another stick before someone else grabs it. Right? Yeah, I, I would There's say no reason to, if you're fighting over a stick that is poor strategy. Well, it does have a. The problem is occasionally three times in our game, which is a small number compared to the number of like throws we did. Every single yeah, three times two people grabbed the same stick at the same time and there was no way to resolve it. Mm-hmm. But if you just come up with a simple rule, because the rules do say you cannot pry it out of someone else's hand. So I think you could do the jungle speed rule of whoever's holding it lower wins. Right. It. I mean, just basically, like you can tell, like it's in your hand. You're trying to pry it. Therefore, you don't get it. Right. Yep. It's it's sort of obvious in most scenarios. There were two who's scenarios. Who's the one? Who's the prior and who's the prye? Twice, me and Pat were both holding it at the same time, and we both had a grip on it with the right hand. With and, the right in, hand. In the right manner. We we just after doing the right we, thing. Yep. So uh, that's the only thing I would add is just come up with a very simple rule of if two people hold it, whoever's holding it closer to the bottom gets it like something like that just in case yeah. and then you're good i mean you could also if you really want to just put your phone up and then uh if you set your phone nearby recording you could see who grabbed it first with some instant replay Ooh, we should do that for jungle speed we should make an instant replay app that's like oh add, in- add instant replay to your whole life just put this phone on a little tripod and turn this app on that is not a bad idea and for just an app keep continuously recording for like you know a minute and then if you ever need an instant replay you can just touch so actually the- all my cameras, like the cameras will do that. Mm. They have a continuous mode for yeah. that purpose. Yeah, of course. Maybe we should start doing that when we play dexterity games. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll slow it down as fast as at the highest frame rate and see who grabbed it first. So I would say, and Volt Faustin is from 2018. They're both pretty recent games. Sorry, German people. Yep. And German speakers. Uh, Hansa Toy Tonica, I Any- guess. Anyway. Anyway, these games are both pretty good. 
both worth getting if you want like dexterity games on the table. They are both like way above average for that genre. Mm -hmm. They're neither one of them is great, but they are both very good and very fun. Yeah, I don't know where you're gonna get a copy of Volfosten or or the other. I don't, I, both these games might be hard to find. Yeah, they're the kind of games you're gonna have to either like import or trade someone or something like that. Yeah, dude, uh, Volfosten. There are only four pictures of it in Board Game Geek. Like. I have more pictures of this game on my cell phone than are on Board Game Geek. Yeah. So, sorry. Upload your photos to Board Game Geek. I think I should. Yeah. Sorry we reviewed two games that are great that you probably can't play. Well, I imagine the Volf Austin might get an American release or not. Who knows? You could make Volf Austin pretty easily. You could just make a Volf Austin. You, need, you just need a wood shop to make the, the wooden sticks. And then you could just wood shop. Just buy square squared well, dowels. You could, you could yeah. You could, you could you could buy a square like wooden Dude, stick. You need and then just chop it. You need a Dremel yeah. and a and one square. You, go, you can dowel. go to the hardware store, get one piece of wood that's the right shape, and just cut it the right lengths. Yep. You know, six inch, five inch, four inch, three inch, whatever. Or I guess I guess I'd do seven six five four three two. Yeah, something like that. Or maybe that. eight seven six five four three one inch in between each, and then get a bunch of dice and draw on them. And then you're good. And you're good to go. And you get the rule book from the internet. 